What's up guys, The Methodical Show here today to bring you a video asking the question and giving my own opinion on what the best episode so far of Season 7 of The 100 has been. So basically what I'm going to do for this video is kind of loosely break down each episode we've seen so far to the first 9, and then after that I'm going to give my opinion on which episode so far has been my favorite. The first episode I'm going to be mentioning in this video is the premiere of Season 7, From the Ashes. I thought this was a great premiere of the season, especially when I watched it live. It was a mostly Clark-centric episode. It focused on some other things. There was nothing really with the anomaly. It was kind of just catching up in Sanctum and seeing what's been going on since uh, since the end of Season 6, basically. The episode focused mostly on uh, the end of Season 6 and nothing to do with the cliffhanger of Season 6. Uh, we did get a glimpse of it right at the beginning. We saw Bellamy being dragged away and we saw like the end of the cliffhanger of Season 6, but after that, there was nothing anomaly-related until episode 2. The biggest shifting point of this entire episode was Clark's mentality. This entire episode, people keep asking Clark, like, how do you feel about Abby's death? She was, I think, asked it like three or four times, and she kept kind of just shrugging it off throughout the episode, like, yeah, it's okay, you know, people die, things happen, I'm over it type of thing. But each time she was asked it, you kind of see a little bit of the I'm not over it side, too, and, it, and there was something brewing there the entire episode, and then it just ex exploded at the end and that's what made that episode so memorable I think was those what's that last scene Russell had offered Clark Abby's clothes and some other stuff there with that and then that was the breaking point right there where she just lost it attacked Russell started burning down the palace uh, and then went out and went through the palace is burning it was an incredible ending scene to the premiere and she came out and then made this massive speech to the people that Russell Prime was going to die for his actions and it was just incredible incredible really good ending to that episode. Now, with all that said about this episode, I think it's a strong contender to be my favorite episode of the first nine. Now, let's move on to episode two, which was titled The Garden. Now, this episode focused entirely on the anomaly story and on half current time and half flashback. In the current timeline, this episode featured Echo, Gabriel, and Adult Hope, while the flashback timeline featured Octavia, Dioza, and Young Hope. Start to finish, I think this episode nailed the storytelling and what it needed to do with Octavia and the flashbacks and everything that had happened the first time she went into the anomaly right behind Dioza. And the entire time it was kind of leaving you wonder, like, okay, how does she end up out of the anomaly if she can't leave? How does she end up getting back out? Because we knew from season six she did get out and how that all happened. And it left you wondering the entire episode. And then even at the end, it wasn't really that clear so that would probably be a negative to it, but that's kind of just the anomaly storyline being a little confusing at the same time anyway. The biggest negative I think about this episode for me anyway, and I remember when I watched it live that I thought the exact same thing was that Echo, Gabriel, and Hope's storyline ended up being a complete waste of time. They were trying to find a way off this planet, off this now we know as a prison planet, and they couldn't find a way off of it, and then when Gabriel finally thinks he's cracked the code of the anomaly, he's got the video, he runs out looking for a pen and then the disciple prisoner just smashes the recording and that's just gone. So at that point they had to completely reset their idea and uh, then it just went nowhere really in that episode. Uh, the high point of this episode was easily the flashbacks with Octavia, Dioza, and Young Hope becoming a family. They were incredible in this episode. They were easily the best part. While everything that Echo, Gabriel, and Adult Hope did kind of led nowhere and is not something I'd like to watch again on rewatch. Because if you wanted to rewatch this episode and you knew that Echo, Gabriel, and Hope's storyline went nowhere and did nothing really in this episode, then you'd probably just skip through it and you wouldn't really want to watch that again. So that's my only negative really of this episode. The Garden overall was a really, really good episode and filled in a lot of blanks and it is an episode that we needed, but it is not currently a contender to be my favorite episode of so far of Season 7. Episode 3 of Season 7 was titled False Gods, and this entire episode so pretty much just focused on Raven and Murphy, and it served as the first time we've ever seen in the 100 Raven be put into a morally compromising position. And that whole story with Raven and Murphy really carried this episode. And even though it might have seemed like filler at the time, it actually led to a lot of the stuff we're seeing in the current episodes. So I gotta give this episode a little bit more credit than when I first watched it. Because on first watch, I thought this episode was pretty much just filler. It didn't really add anything to the story when I watched it the first time, but now now, as we see later on, it did kind of affect things, so I have to give this episode a little bit more credit. That doesn't mean
mean it's gonna be a contender for one of my favorite episodes i it just it wasn't really filler but it, it wasn't really story changing either it was kind of a i don't know a dull episode i'll call it this episode also moved shade head as arc along a little bit but it didn't really do anything too dramatic and that's why it was considered by a lot of fans to be a bit of a filler episode and i thought it was solid but that's up to the opinion i guess and now we'll get on to episode four episode four was titled hesperides and it marked the first time that clark and any of our people from sanctum interacted with the disciples and it was the first time any of our people got their hands on disciples technology and bardo technology and got to really mess around with it and start to understand what world they're really living in it also showed raven trying to recover from the trauma that she suffered in episode three with letting hatch die and then with the whole thing with nikki and the allegiance prisoners and having to deal with them which we would definitely see later on that play out a bit more in different episodes not really this one as much but later on we also got to see clark and the others reactions to bellamy octavia and echo and them all going missing and then we got to see them making a plan really to come back and get them this episode the ending cliffhanger was them going through the anomaly and battling with the disciples and killing a lot of them and then going through and that left us on a pretty good cliffhanger as to like where they would end up which we wouldn't see in, again until episode six but this was a really solid episode i would definitely say it is a contender for my favorite episode of the season episode five was titled welcome to bardo and it was the first time we've got to see octavia in the kind of current timeline even though timelines are kind of mixed because of the way the bardo uh, time dilation and all that stuff would work and we got to see memory cap we for, that was the first episode we got to see levitt we got to see anders and the first time we ever actually got to see bardo itself uh, this episode was so significant for so many different characters and people and it showed us bardo and the technology it was just a really 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 good episode is one we needed to get and was definitely one of the biggest episodes of the first nine i would think welcome to bardo is definitely a consideration for my favorite episode so far in the hundred season seven episode six was titled nakara and it was the first time and probably the last time we'll ever get to see this ice planet we saw our group who left in episode four to go through the anomaly and they ended up on the ice planet so they obviously did not choose bardo so they chose wrong and then they were stuck on this ice planet and the whole episode for them anyway consisted of them trying to get off of this ice planet i was slightly disappointed by this episode because i was hoping we get to see a little bit more of the scenery with it with this ice planet and stuff and we got maybe like one or two scenes with it and we got nothing else the rest was in a cave i would imagine that has something to do with the budget and things like that probably trying to keep that down considering it isn't like a premiere uh, season finale or anything so they couldn't really go all out with some crazy set for nakara but it was still cool nonetheless we also the first time we ever seen alien life in the hundred or no we did we'd seen alien life back in season six but this time we ever seen like a real like alien life threat i think we've ever seen on the show we got some really good clark and raven scenes in this episode but other than that it wasn't too strong of an episode it was really solid again there hasn't really been too many bad episodes this season and i don't think this is one of them so this one was very good but i'm not it's not going to be considered for my favorite episode of the season episode 7 was titled the queen's gambit this episode focused on unity day with imori murphy and what was going on at sanctum and we really got to see that arc finally explode and turn violent for the first time and on the other side in the anomaly we were dealing with echo octavia dios and hope and whatever type of family struggle thing they had going on and they were captured and we seen the whole rest of their story finally catch up to the current timeline it didn't really feature anything from our main group of clark raven jordan and the rest but it was still good enough and it definitely was not filler it was a really really solid episode my favorite scenes of this entire episode came of murphy and shade had a, they had the absolute best just to see them going back and forth the cockiness of murphy and then shade Hedda, who just is smarter than everybody else it was a really interesting dynamic to see play out and they were playing chess and you just know the whole time shade had is just reading murphy every little movement every little thing he says he's using against him and then eventually we see later on in that episode that shade had was really just playing him and just keeping him there so he more he couldn't stop the allegiance prisoners and nikki from taking the sanctum palace this episode was really really fun i thought i would definitely consider this to be one of my favorite episodes of the first nine now on to episode eight which was the official midway point of this season and it was titled anaconda and is episode eight of season seven the only really downside to this episode i thought was the fact that we didn't really
really get much of our main cast in it. But our main cast, I didn't really miss them that much. This episode was so good. Without them, it really opened up so many more possibilities to tell stories in the 100 universe. We got to see so many cool things. We got to see how the grounder language was made up. We filled in so many blanks from the earlier seasons. And the entire episode itself just felt like an earlier season of the 100. And it's something I miss so much. And is the reason why I want to see the 100 prequels so damn bad. Callie and Reese had a really, really good dynamic. It wasn't like very similar to the Bellamy Octavia brother sister connection. It was very different. Reese was so close to his father that he was playing almost the antagonist role to Callie and the way we are seeing the story play out. Getting to see the Cadigan family kind of where they came from and what has happened and what Cadigan is really like, I think is such an important thing to see for the future of the season now. We already know what type of person he is and what he believes in and, and what he'll he's willing to do to get it. Also, what he's willing to take from people and make sure people believe in him no matter what. That is always the most important thing. We kind of found out that he is a religious fanatic similar to Russell and he loves being worshipped and these other things with these with these false god type characters. But without rambling on too much about this episode it is obviously in consideration to be my favorite episodes of the first nine. Now the last episode we're going to be briefly going over in this video is episode nine, The Flock. This is the most recent episode to when this video is being uploaded, and it was a very solid episode, I think. It, it was kind of our mid-season finale a little bit. It kind of serves as that, because we're not getting another one for a few weeks. In this episode, we got to see a little bit more into the Birdo culture, and how they kind of train these disciples from their, from birth, basically, to believe in this false god and this cause. And we also got to see, possibly, the final war, and what we're going to be up against in this final war. And we got to see Octavia echo dioza and hope training to become disciples in the sanctum story we got murphy and indra dealing with the uh nikki and the allegis problem and also with nelson and the children of gabriel trying to take over the palace and all that was going on and they finally were able to take it back but without much struggle really they just kind of made a little sneaky plan with shade Hedda. they kind of made a deal with the devil and we really saw that the cliffhanger for this episode as he murdered all of russell's believers and completely just looked like a complete demon by the end of this episode and now we know what the real problem at Sanctum is. It's not anybody else. It's going to be Shade Hedda. With all that said, I wouldn't consider The Flock in consideration to be my favorite episode of the season. It was very solid, but it isn't one of my favorite personally. And of course, this is all just subjective. It's favorite episodes, really. Now that we've briefly went over all of them, I'm going to give my final opinion on my favorite episode so far in this season of The 100. And I want you all to do the same. Go to the comments and now that i've briefly went over all of them if you forget like what happened in each one and leave what your favorite episode was before i give mine my favorite episode of of the first nine that we've saw so far in the hundred season seven is episode eight anaconda now if you saw my review for that episode this is probably no surprise that i absolutely love that episode and i really want to see the hundred prequel because this episode just checked all the boxes for me because i think they put so much into it like budget wise and stuff that they really want to get the hundred prequel pick up. This episode really just checked all the boxes. It got me emotionally invested in all the characters that were in the prequel episode even though we didn't really know any of them besides Cadigan from the current timeline. And just getting to fill in these blanks like where the grounders came from, how their language was created, and seeing the language used before the hundred was ever even a thing, like 97 years before that. And getting to see how the grounders survived the end of the world over a three year time span I thought was just so interesting. And it didn't even really need like any characters we knew. Well I mean we knew a couple of them. We knew Becca and Cadigan, obviously, but to be able to get invested in his family story as well and seeing the way the Hunter prequel could really take off if it's picked up was really the thing that got me the most excited when watching the season so far of the Hundred. Now that brings me to the end of this video, and if you enjoyed the Hundred, please leave a like and subscribe, and I'll catch you all in the next video.